<laughs> Boring buggers. <laughs> well, welcome to you. Uh, my name is Buzz Hawkins, and um, probably if I've got any kind of, well, if I've got any notoriety, it's because I'm kind of the tour guy for the Bradshaws. The Bradshaws, have you, who's heard of the Bradshaws? Because yeah. I know. Well, I know there's a lot, of that, that's good, because I know there's a lot of Horton Weaver fans in here who think I'm a group. They were waiting for me to start playing banjos and things like that now, but, but anyway, um, can I tell you how it started, the Bradshaws? Because it, it is important that the ones who don't know do very soon. Shall we do that? I'm going to tell you how it started. Okay, thank you. There I was on a very late night radio station not far from here, a long time ago, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> There was a small boy, I was sat there in front of a microphone about to sing a song and I changed my mind. I thought, well, the bosses don't listen at this time of the night. I know, I'll do a story instead because I'd written a story that afternoon. And a small boy skipped into my mind to help me with the delivery of it. And I thought, I knew he was a boy because he was only skipping on one foot. He went... <laughs> Because boys only skip on one foot, girls skip on two, but boys skip on one. And he skipped past me and he saw his friend at the blank wall. Hiya Winifred, <laughs> well you're standing on your head again aren't you? I can't see your face because your frock's still over it. But I recognise you through the hole in your knickers. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. We've been collecting frog sperm. I didn't catch none because I don't think frogs come in the winter. It's been dead good at school today, ma'am. We done politics, so what is a general erection? Now that's an hard one, Billy Duff. <laughs> Not until you're 21, love. Oh, bugger off, Audrey. <laughs> and suddenly the Bradshaws had walked into my life. I am now officially a triple schizophrenic. <laughs> and that doesn't include Bernard Ripley. <laughs> Bernard, I'm glad you joined us tonight. And I've taken a leaf out of your book because it spoiled everything for me. When I worked with you several years ago, you started doing little bits of snippets from your books. Because it's a show off. He's written loads of books. And you read snippets out and I thought, I could do that, but I need a book. <laughs> so I don't, so uh, anyway, I've got this book called The Bradshaws and all that, and it's kind of like the Beano Annual, it's got cartoons on it and stories and, and things to do and make and how to make paper aeroplanes and, and skipping rhymes and tucking your frock in your knickers and doing handstands against the wall and all those other things boys did. <laughs> And I decided, because it's my book and I can do anything I want when I'm the book owner, I wrote Audrey in it, I gave her a very own problem page. She's an agony aunt now in this book. Can I read you one of them? Can I read you something? Yeah. Well, right. All kinds of people write to Audrey, you know, and if you feel, if you feel, you know, you've got a problem, you're not answering, you can very easily write to Audrey Bradshaw and she will do her best to answer it now. I'll, I'll just read you the two parts. First bit is the, is the person who wrote to her and then her response. <coughs> this it says, Dear Audrey, I know you're not a doctor, but you seem to have an understanding of general homey type problems like housemaid's knee, mumps, tonsillitis and that sort of thing. Well, I'll come to the point. I have this embarrassing itching, you see. It's bad enough when I'm stood up, but it's practically impossible to get at when I'm sat down without contorting myself like a contortionist. I'd appreciate your advice on the matter. Thanks in anticipation, yours, down below, Happy Valley, Hampshire. <laughs> and Audrey says, Dear Don, I think I know what might just be causing your itchiness. I bet you've got some of them brine nylon knickers, haven't you? <laughs> well, they're all right until you go to bed in them. 
That's when they end up full of little hard balls of bed fluff. <laughs> oh, and they do tend to itch. They did me. Chuck them out right away, even if you've nought else to put on you. My best friend, Betty Morris, often goes without, but she never goes upstairs on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it myself, though. Alf says he suggested you made a scratcher out of one of them newfangled wire coal tangers and bent it straight with a little bit turned up at the end. But you'd have to be careful. <laughs> Love Audrey. And she gets some from fellas as well. I'll just read you this next one here. This from a fella. Dear Audrey, being a mother yourself, you might understand my predicament. My six-month-old baby son, Robert, seems to be able to output twice as much as he inputs. And as changing his nappy makes me bilious, I do anything to avoid it. I sealed him up once with elastoplast, but he blew it right off. <laughs> I love my son, but I'm at the end of my tether. Please help. Frankly sick, bark up, lanks. And Audrey says, Dear Frank, I realise it isn't easy being a mother when you're a man. So I'll write slowly. Babies can't eat the same food as grown-ups, and I notice your letter smelled of curry. Well, being a working mother is hard, and it might seem easier to give your Robert a bit of what you have, but it isn't a good idea. Curry and chips and a bottle of brown ale is fine for you, but Robert needs a rusk now and then. I think you should find yourself a nice widow. Alf thinks you should change Robert underwater because it works with onions. But take no notice, love Audrey. <laughs> 